Greetings, radio friends, round the round world. The back home hour tonight will be a memorial service to the five missionary martyrs who gave their lives for Christ and his gospel just one week ago, seeking to reach the savage Auca Indians in the jungles of Ecuador. That out of this apparent tragedy is coming a wonderful note of victory. On the shores of that little river that few of us have ever seen, there has been left the remains of this small missionary aviation plane. Nearby, the common grave in which our fallen comrades have been buried. No greater monument could ever be erected by any government or any group of men than the simple testimony that that plane, stripped of its fabric and yet still standing there, shall give as long as it lasts and as long as that river flows. To try to evaluate what these men have done in human terms is indeed difficult. To think of this martyrdom of five valiant men on a material basis is indeed absurd. Even to put this sacrifice of supreme devotion on the level of altruism or humanitarianism simply doesn't satisfy our hearts. There must be something higher, something more noble, something more glorious, and indeed there is, as you've already heard mentioned previously. There is only one right and satisfying explanation for what happened out there in Operation Auka just one week ago. It is on the high spiritual elevation of love of Christ and of his gospel more than the love of self. In this is the lesson that shall be ours and the world's, as long as the names of these five men shall live in our memory. The Apostle Paul was a man of this stripe, and he wrote, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I am ready to be offered. Certainly this morning and by what we have gained from the radio and press notices of Ecuador, and we owe a debt of gratitude to the press of this country and to the world for that matter, the radio and the television of the United States and elsewhere, surely one thing has stood out, and that is the word preparation. It was so sincerely the desire of the wives transmitted to us by this thin but effective thread of jungle radio network communications that the world should understand this was not a happen chance, this was not an accident, this was not an improvisation, but this was something entered into with full knowledge, full understanding of the possible consequences and certainly of the danger involved. These men were the category of the Apostle Paul. They too could say, we are ready, and we are ready to be offered up. Abe Vanderpoy, our field director, just returned from Shalmera, where with Harvey Bostrom and with others, he has spent this past dramatic week, shall I say, but it's far more than that. Just to give you an idea of the thinking of these men, before they went out, sitting by the little organ, the little reed organ out there, in one of those jungle homes to which they had gladly gone without any sense of sacrifice, but joyously, 
They sang these words together, the well-known tune of Finlandia. Beautiful words of Christian challenge and consecration, which were sung by the fellows before they set out for Alka territory. We rest on thee, our shield and our defender. We go not forth alone against the foe, strong in thy strength, safe in thy tender keeping. We rest on thee, and in thy name we go. We rest in thee, our shield and our defender. Thine is the glory, thine shall be the praise. When passing through the gates of pearly splendor, victors, we rest with thee through endless days. We are ready, ready to be offered. There is a courage that is born <clears throat> in the moment of emergency that perhaps each one of us thinks he possesses. But these men demonstrated the courage that comes after due and mature thought has been given to all of the dangers and the facing of death itself. And yet with all their hearts, like Paul, they said, we are ready to be offered. Therefore, as we meet in this memorial service, remembering Nate Saint, remembering the four colleagues, Ed McCulley, Pete Fleming, James Elliott, and Roger Udarian, we would stand and salute their memory. Only a few days ago they were here in Quito. Only a few days we, ago we grasped their hands. Only a few days ago, as you've heard, we felt the warmth of their challenge. And they being dead, yet speak. This is the glory of the Christian. This is the triumph of the gospel. They would have it no other way, I'm sure. And I believe I speak for their wives and their children when I say this. May we ask ourselves this challenging question as we leave this time honoring their memory. Are we prepared as they were? Do we have the courage that was born in their hearts? by faith in Jesus Christ? Do we have the courage to go back into life with all of its dangers and problems and difficulties? The only way that we can face life prepared to be offered up is to know the same Christ that they knew personally, intimately, with all the hot devotion of their hearts. Young men, strong men, trained and prepared men. The world will ask the question, were they fools to throw away their lives? They knew what they were doing. And if they had it to do all over again, knowing them as we do, we know they'd go right back. A newspaper reporter called me by radio phone from one of the cities of the states, as so many have during the past week. And she asked the question rather timidly. Now I suppose that these have died. No one else will dare to go back into the Alka territory. And I was happy to say as a Christian, for this they went, and for this they died. And for this, still others will go. And may the church of Jesus Christ be challenged as never before. I had the privilege of speaking to one of the men on television in the States in a two-way conversation. And he asked the question, and how can it be that these people, so far removed from our civilization, as Nate say, said, back in the Stone Age of thinking, how can they ever be evangelized? And God again gave the answer. 
They have a heart. And as long as they have a heart, God can reach it. This is the challenge. From the lives of these young men, faithful warriors of the cross of Jesus Christ, to you and me, may we go from this place not with a sense of emotion or even admiration, but with a deep sense of longing to know Christ personally as our Savior through his shed blood on the cross, as intimately, as personally, as these men did, and thus be able to say, like that battle-scarred warrior centuries ago, I too am ready, ready to be offered. We rest on thee, our shield and our defender. Thine shall be.